proyecto gráfico editorial? Or explain what I do. I, I do editorial work, graphic editorial work based on the Nahua culture of my community. It's an indigenous region here in Mexico City. And I, I basically wanted to explore visual storytelling. I don't think that we as indigenous peoples only use poetry or storytelling. We also use graphic storytelling and I wanted to highlight the importance of that. And what I do is for the past 10 years, I started with this idea of, of I mean, it, it all started with the fact that I never saw my story, my culture, my language being reflected in any content, any graphic content, be it in print, hard copy, on the internet, on in the movies, on TV, radio. I never saw my, my face, my voice anywhere. In my community, it would seem that I wasn't as important. I wasn't important enough to be in a book, in a story, to be part of anything. And so I do these illustrations. I work with animation. I'm somewhat familiar with the animation side of, of illustration. And in my community, I find my, I, I believe that I am a somebody who is learning. Although I'm an indigenous per person, I'm pr somebody who is barely learning to speak her language. And I thought, If I had learned this language from the very beginning when I was a child, and if I had learned about all of these things that the Mexican government strategically disappeared from my knowledge, it, things would be different. And so I thought that in the future that shouldn't be taking place and that it's us, the young people, who have to find a way to overcome things. Because a lot of that information that we used to have has been lost, has it has been censored, it has been eliminated. And so that's why I began this project in which I wanted to bring back our language and to have an impact on a generation of young people in my community who no longer speak the language, who no longer recall the oral traditions, who no longer live off of the land, off of the land. And I was wondering, how could I go about making sure that these new generations, which have been bombarded and influenced by so many other things, to find a way to embrace their culture, to look at it with pride and to say, oh yes, that's what I am and I like to be that. And so what my strategy was to um, break away from stereotypes, perhaps more so those related to indigenous involvement in the graphic world, because I've learned over the years how the indigenous peoples have been represented in books, in movies, in uh, cartoons, and it's been terrible. And all of those views, the way they look at things, have been from the outside looking in. That is to say, nobody from our own indigenous peoples have done anything in that regard. We hadn't created our own version of ourselves. We hadn't represented ourselves. We hadn't had our own content. We hadn't been done. We hadn't been doing it. It would seem something so simple to do. And all of a sudden I realized we don't have that. We don't have it in my community. So I can do that because I studied that. I studied to be an illustrator. I'm a specialist in that. I'm an expert in visual narrative. And so the, I started to work on that. And then all of that led me to the language and that I had to learn my language, study it, and I had to get involved with the community with which I wanted to communicate. And so in that sense, act digital activists are going to play a very important role because they use exhaustive and creative use of the tools that are available to us. Also because we're looking for graphic and artistic criteria in which we use our language and our culture. This is something that is done with a political position. It's a it's a political positioning. It's not something that we're doing just because it's in Spanish or, or because it's pretty or because they gave me a scholarship or something. I'm doing this because my voice and the voice of a lot of indigenous peoples is not being heard. 
we don't have the same rights as everybody else. We don't have the same education. For example, in my case, I studied design and arts in Mexico, which is a country which is extremely wealthy in narratives and in graphics. In the design school at my university, we had no subject dealing with indigenous art and design. To put it, just to make you understand how difficult the situation is, they were completely eliminating our ancient knowledge. If our young indigenous people go to those public universities, public schools, to find a way to earn a living with all of that wealth they have behind them, but then they come to the university where they focus exclusively on creating skilled workers, and they don't tell them that their culture is important and that they can contribute because they have important things to say, we would find ourselves in a terrible situation. And so I would say that... El activismo digital que hace, pues pone de manifiesto. Digital activism helps us to see all of those gaps that we have. It shows that they've made us invisible, that they've thrown us from the frame and they've wanted to eliminate our culture. So getting back to the question, oh yes. Um, I think that digital activists, when I when I decided that I was going to do this because I wanted to do this and I've been doing this for years now, I can say that don't lose your excitement because I assure you there are more and more people involved in this as the years go by. And, and it's logical and there's an enormous future here. I understand that belonging, the sense of belonging through these types of content will increase. And it's very important that we not uh, throw in the towel, that we always continue with our effort. Activists are me simply mediators, somebody who helps to bring people together, people who want to express themselves and people who want to hear others expressing themselves. That's and because there's an audience that hadn't been reflected in the past. They were in small niches, but they've, they've found an identity, they found an identity for themselves. And people are realizing that they can learn from others and, and that they have a right. And so this is, those of us who are activists, who are involved in all of this, we're, we're all committed, committed were engaged with this whole idea of representing the audience. And so we are representatives of the audience and of the indigenous people. And it's a political position. It's not just something that's in vogue or fashionable. And I mention this because there is a, a, a trend right now in illustration and in book publishing, which I think is going to change in the future because we have to there's a lot of trends going on. A lot of artists, editors, uh, filmmakers, content producers that are not indigenous are going to supposedly, quote unquote, inspire themselves by in, in indigenous languages to create characters, ca cartoon characters and so on from their point of view. Is that right? I, I mean, I can't say that it shouldn't be done. It might help us to become more visible. But remember that it would be best for us to do it from our own uh, point of view. Remember that as activists, we have a political position. We're not doing this just for the sake of doing it for the sake of fashion, which is what the Mexican government often does. The Mexican government has been responsible for almost 90% of editorial pub, uh, content in Mexico and 80 percent because 80 percent of the products are are bought by the government the state so the state decides what is published for what audience and so on even for the indigenous peoples indigenous uh, what people indigenous peoples read and write are based on what the state says they believe that they are, they should he listen hear more about the little prince or that type of character more than an indigenous character but that's not what we need as indigenous peoples we need to hear our own stories our own stories being reflected in books and in their own languages my recommendations 
I have a lot of recommendations and I don't know if I have enough time. Taheo, do I have enough time? Well, could you just give us two really quickly to conclude and then in the final round you can round those thoughts out? Well, the first recommendation would be something that Hen had already mentioned, which is that you have to analyze, research, work on, work with all of the resources available to you. Use your creativity to use all of the tools available to you and even those that aren't available to you. Exploit all of those tools as much as possible. Find uh, models for internal validation. Don't just wait for the state or for who knows what institution to award us with something or to acknowledge us. We have to validate ourselves. And also another proposal would be to design uh, an educational program for digital artists focus on the design and production of visual narratives that goes from the creation of characters to the entire business because that's part of the economic sustainability facet as well because it's it, you need money for all of this and so far it hasn't been very profitable it's not like we want to become rich but we have a right to have all of this we pay researchers for uh, for researching authors from all over the world, but they don't pay for this type of work, this type of research taking place for us. At least I haven't heard that much about that happening. And uh, for, to the universities, I would like to ask them to become spaces that allow us to imagine new alternatives and to put them into practice, that they become spaces that they accompany us in these projects by providing us with training, consultancy, uh, access to hardware and software, internet, that they include in their curriculum the design of indigenous arts, that they also give us the possibility of thinking about creating content for the public in general, not for specialists, not just for specialists, and also to give us scholarships and and uh, and grants and prioritize indigenous peoples and it not just be the same people that have done it in the past. Mm -hmm.